Kia ora koutou. So now we've established what digraphs are and how we can represent them, we'll spend the next few lectures studying systematic ways in which we can visit all the nodes in the digraph. So-called graph traversal then is a fundamental and widely used graph algorithm. Lots of operations on digraphs require visiting every node of the digraph and getting from one node to another following only the arcs present in the digraph, so using the topology of the digraph. So we'll approach this problem by setting up a, a general skeleton for any traversal algorithm and its analysis in this lecture. And then we'll spend the next couple of lectures looking at specific ways we can complete the algorithm and how that affects performance and so on. Okay, so how does a general graph traversal work? Remember we want to visit each node of a digraph in a systematic way using only the arcs of the digraph to get between nodes. It will be useful to keep track of where we have been by using a system of three colours of nodes. Nodes that have not yet been visited are coloured white, so I'll have an unfilled in um, node picture for those. Uh, nodes that have been visited but may have out neighbours that are unvisited, so it may have white out neighbours, are coloured grey. So we'll sometimes refer to grey nodes as frontier nodes, and I'll um, represent them on the board just by um, drawing a cross through them. Finally, nodes that have been visited and have all their out no have had all their out neighbours visited are coloured black. On the board, I'll just um, fill those in completely like that. White, grey, and black. So imagine we're partway through a traversal of this digraph here, then node zero it is coloured black, it has no white out neighbours. Nodes 1 and 3 are coloured grey, they've been visited but have a white out neighbour, and node 2 is um, coloured white is yet, as yet unvisited. Okay, so the basic traversal algorithm goes like this. We start with all nodes unvisited, so they're coloured white, and we'll continue by choosing nodes to visit first by choosing any grey nodes and visiting their neighbours, or if there are no grey nodes, we'll choose a white node. So at the start, as I said, we start, everything's white, so we need to choose a white node. Let's say we'll choose one, we'll colour it grey to show that we visited, and now we're on to the next step. So as I said, we'll look first for a grey node. Here's a grey node, so we'll choose that, and we'll visit its out neighbours that are unvisited. So we'll choose this um, grey node, we'll look for white out neighbours, look here's one, so we'll visit that. We're on to the next step, again we'll choose a grey node and we'll look for white out neighbours. Let's say we choose zero again, look it's got a white out neighbour, so we'll choose that. Next step, let's choose zero again, it's got no white out neighbours, so we can colour zero black, and so on and so forth. Next I'm going to choose one, it's got a white out neighbour, so I visit that, and etc. until every node um, in the graph has turned black. We'll um, keep track of which arc we crossed to turn a neighbour from white to grey. That is, which arc did we follow to first visit a node? So when we chose zero, we um, crossed this node to get to one, then we crossed this node to get to three, uh, and then we went from one to two. So to try and formalise that a bit, we can write down that basic idea in the form of pseudocode. The algorithm is um, best understood by splitting into two routines, one called traverse, which does um, the setup and chooses white nodes to start from, the other is called visit, and we'll see that that does most of the work of the algorithm. Okay, the traverse code then looks like this. So we hand traverse a digraph G, and then we have two arrays, color, which will keep track of the color of each node. So we've got n entries in color. Um, we've got pred, which is a predecessor array, which tell, tells us the way we arrived at each node when we first visited it visited it. That is, if we got 
um, to node j by crossing the arc ij, then we'll store i in the jth position of pred. Okay, so traverse doesn't actually do that much. It sets up these arrays, it initializes um, all the nodes to white, it, uh, then it goes through every node, it looks for any nodes that are white, the first white node that it finds, it uh, visits it. And it goes through there until there's no more white nodes left. So really, we need to, to figure out what's going on, we'll have to look at visit, and then once visit's done its work, it'll return this predecessor array. So let's look at visit. We've arrived at visit with some, our chosen node S from our digraph G. So we visit it. We visit S, so we color S gray, and since we didn't follow any arc to get to this first node S, we'll um, simply set the predecessor to null. Then we'll enter this while loop, it's where we spend most of our time, stopping only when there are no more gray nodes. What happens in this loop? Well, we choose a gray node U, we know we've got one because we're in this loop, and then we look for any white neighbors of U. If U has a white neighbor, then we'll choose one, we'll call that V, basically we'll visit V, right? So we'll color V gray, and then we'll set the predecessor of V to be U, because we followed the arc from U to V. In the case that uh, U doesn't have a white neighbor, we'll change its color from gray to black. So we'll set the color of U to be black. Notice that each pass of this while loop will change the color of exactly one node, either turning a white neighbor of the chosen gray node gray, or we'll choose the chosen gray node black. So after each pass of this return loop, we'll come back, we'll choose another gray node, and continue through until every node we can reach from S has turned black. At that point, we return tra to the traverse routine, we carry on looking for any white nodes, if we do find another white node still remaining in G, then we dive back into our visit routine, otherwise we're done, everything in the digraph is black, so we turn, return the predecessor array. The predecessor array which we return is, as the name suggests, a tree representation of all the visited nodes, and we'll see that it's a, a spanning sub-digraph of the traverse tree. So remember that a, a spanning, spanning sub-digraph means that it's a, a sub-digraph that contains all the nodes in the original digraph, and the arcs it happens to record are those arcs which were crossed when a node turned from white to gray. So let's look at an example in detail, um, and we'll hopefully understand the workings of it a bit better. Here's a digraph with five nodes. Now we pass it into tra traverse, it sets up a couple of node um, arrays, um, the color array, we'll use that, we'll just color in the nodes themselves, and the um, predecessor array. So let's set that one up. Everything starts off white. Um, we uh, get to here, we choose a white node. Um, let's say we let S be A, and then we call visit with node A. Okay. So now we're over here, visit um, takes A, part of the graph, first thing it does is it colors it gray, then it sets the um, predecessor of A to be um, null. Let's just call minus one null. And what does that mean? It means that A has no predecessor. We haven't followed any arc to get there. Now we'll choose a gray node, right? We've only got one gray node, so it'll have to be A, and then we um, check if that gray node has a white neighbor. Does A have a white neighbor? Yes, it does. It's got C. So what do we do? We choose C, we color C gray, 
and we set the predecessor of C to be A. Now we're back at the start of the loop and we choose another grey node. Let's say we choose C this time, we look around, we say does it have a white neighbour? Yes it does, it has E, so we visit E, we colour it grey and we record the predecessor of E as C. We're back at the top of the loop again, we'll choose another grey node, let's say we choose C again, C has no white neighbours, so um, we'll colour C black. We're back at the top of the loop. We'll go through the loop a couple more times, seeing that um, neither A nor E has any white out neighbours, so we'll colour them black. There's no more grey nodes, sorry, so we'll return back to Traverse. Now in Traverse, we just continue looking through each of the nodes, we look at B, we see that it's white, so we call visit with B. What do we do with B and visit? Well, we'll first colour it grey, we'll set the predecessor of B to be null, so we'll put a minus one there. Then we look for any grey nodes. Look, we've got one grey node, it's B, so we'll choose that. If B has a a white neighbour, yes it does, it's got D, so we'll choose D, we'll visit that, we'll colour it grey, we'll set the predecessor of D to be B, and then we're back at the top of the loop. There's a couple more iterations through the loop when we look for, unsuccessfully, for white out neighbours of B and D, and we colour them both black. We've got to the, the end of this, we return to here, we find the no, no more white nodes here, so we simply return the predecessor array and we're done. So we've seen that the predecessor array represents a collection of trees. We call this collection of trees a, uh, a search forest, and you can see that in each call to visit, um, we create a tree with root S. Every node that is reachable from S will be included in that tree. So in this example we have, uh, we have two trees, one with root A, that looks like this, and one with root B that looks like this. So we can think of the arcs in the tree as the one we followed in the traversal. So we um, went from A to C here and we used that arc, we went from C to E, and we used that arc, uh, and then we went from B to D, and we used that arc there. In fact, we can look at all of the arcs in the original digraph and classify them according to how they lie in the search forest. So formally, let's suppose we've per per performed a traversal and we've attained a search forest, um, now we take any arc from G, let's say, let's call our search forest F, and suppose we've got some arc uh, UV. UV is a tree arc if it is in one of the trees of F. Now if uh, UV is not a tree arc, so UV is not in one of the trees of F, then we classify the arc according to the relationship of U and V in the search forest. And there's three cases we got, we've got to look at. The first case is that V is a descendant of U in one of the trees. And in that case, UV is a Ford arc. Or U is a descendant of V in one of the trees, in which case UV is a back arc. Otherwise, the only remaining possibility is that there is no ancestor-descendant relationship between U and V and F, in which case we'll call U, V a cross arc. It turns out that understanding this classification of arcs is very useful for understanding the behaviour of traversal algorithms. So let's return to our example and classify each arc in the digraph G. Well, we've already seen that the arcs coloured blue they're tree arcs as they're in 
the search forest. How about the other arcs? We've got four other arcs, AE, EA, BA and BE. Let's look at the first one. So we've got AE and we see in this first tree that E is a descendant of A, so we're up in this case here, so the arc AE is a um, forward arc. EA, well that's the reverse situation, so EA is a back arc. How about BA? So here's B here, here's A here, there's no ancestor descendant relationship between the two, so BA must be a cross arc, and similarly for BE, uh, here's B, here's E, they're not even in the same tree, so BE must also be a cross arc. So we'll state here a few handy results with only rough proofs, and they're results that we'll be using quite a bit later on. Suppose we've got some search forest F. Now, the first result is that if we've got two trees, T1 and T2 in F, and T1 was explored before T2, then there are no arcs going from T1 to T2. Well, why is that? Well, recall that a tree includes everything that is reachable from the root. So if there's an arc from a node in node V in T1, so we've got T1 and we've got V, and suppose there's some arc that goes from T1 to T2, we explored T1 first, so at that point nothing was explored or visited in T2, so we can get from this node across this arc to this node in T2, and that means they wouldn't actually be separate trees. So we can't have that situation. Now if we're not talking about digraphs, but graphs, then we can, you know, make that even stronger. So in a graph, there's no edges between T1 and T2, so there's no, we can't get from T1 to T2, and we can't get back from T2 into T1. Okay, now let's think of nodes um, V and W in our digraph, and we'll suppose that uh, w is reachable from V. Then we'll say if V is visited before W, then V and W are going to be in the same tree. This is essentially an argument we've been making all along uh, for when V is the root of the tree, and this is a simple extension. So if we have some root S, we can get from S to V, we can get from V to W, so we can get from the root S to W. This argument can be extended further to say that if V and W are in the same tree T, and there is a path from V to W, then every node on that path is also in T. And we'll leave the proof of that statement as an exercise. Now I want to finish with a short discussion of the running time of the traversal algorithm. Now we've been too imprecise about particular parts of the um, the visit algorithm to precisely calculate the running time, in particular the methods for choosing a grey node or choosing a, a white node um, are unspecified and could conceivably be quite complex. For our little argument here, we'll just assume that the method for choosing these is simple and constant time, so not dependent on n, the total number of nodes. The amount of time we spend on setup and the traverse algorithm is just n, we need to visit each node. In fact, the total time we'll spend within traverse will be n plus t, where t is the total amount of time that we spend in visit. Let's concentrate on where all the work is done within this while loop in visit. Since every node goes from uh, white to gray to black within this while loop, we'll execute a total number of omega n times. Now we've assumed that the work to choose a grey node is 1, um, and then we've got to go through and find all the white out neighbours of our chosen grey node. How long is that going to take? Well it turns out that depends on our implementation 
of um, the graph at ADT. In the matrix situation, we've got a scan across each row looking for all the ones. Um, and so that'll take, for each node, that'll take n work. And so in total, we'll get n squared. In the list situation, well, we can go straight to each of the out neighbors uh, of a chosen node. Um, and so if it's got d out neighbors, it'll take d time, and the total amount of work there will be m, which is just the size of the graph. So we've assumed the uh, selection rule for choosing a white out neighbor once we've found them is just one. So the total amount of time we're spending here is n squared in the matrix situation and m in the list situation. Putting everything together, we've got n plus t work in total, where t is either um, m squared for matrices or n plus m for lists. So we get, in the matrix situation, we get a big theta n squared. In the uh, adjacency list situation, we get a big theta n plus m. So again, so, so long as the selection rule is simple, it's clear that the adjacency list representation has an advantage with omega uh, n plus m running time. But on the other hand, if the selection rule is more complex, requiring, say, order n work to choose a gray node down here, uh, then the running time is omega n squared regardless of the data structure we use, so we can't rule out adjacency matrices.